we've done a video uh, before with looking at the impact of a capital stock increase in a labor abundant country in actual lean framework um, where um, where the country is uh, is is labor abundant. So before you view this uh, video, be sure and take a look at at that one because I'm going to uh, skip some of the steps that I used to build up this analysis um, because I'm assuming that you understand uh, that material. So first, we're going to uh, depict the trade equilibrium um, with the initial capital stock where production uh, takes place at point A and consumption takes place at point B for this labor abundant country. So it is exporting the capital intensive good, uh, I was importing the capital intensive good and exporting the labor intensive good. And now we've had a capital stock, or I'm sorry, a labor uh, endowment increase. And we're going to draw that as a shift out in the PPF that is skewed out towards the labor intensive good um, for reasons that are clear from the uh, uh, from the uh, the video uh, the video before. So the green line is the world relative price, and now we're going to look at what the uh, outcome of, for production will be uh, if they they face the same relative prices and they've had the, the, uh, uh, the capital stock increase. And so what you would have is a new production point at A prime, which is going to be associated with a reduction in the amount of X that's produced and an increase in the amount of why that is produced. So what you see here is that there is going to be, as a consequence of a labor endowment, that the production of why will increase, the production of X, the imported good, is going to go down. So what you have in this situation is that the stuff that the country makes, this labor-abundant country, is going to expand. They're going to produce more of the labor-abundant, uh, uh, more of the labor-intensive good as a consequence of, these, of this increase in the um, labor endowment. So as they expand Y production, they're going to pull at least some capital out of, the, out of the X sector to use in combination with that uh, the labor that comes in, and there's going to be a reduction in the amount of X as a consequence. Okay, so now let's take a look at the outcome when we continue to assume we've got homothetic tastes, okay, the standard hectoroline assumption, and again that means that if you keep relative prices fixed and you increase income, that the combinations of the two goods will remain the same. So we've got these two green lines, which are the national income before the capital endowment increase, or the labor endowment increase, the uh, national income after the labor endowment increase, and the homothetic tastes mean that we're going to end up consuming at point B prime. Okay, so that's an increase in income, unchanged prices, you expand the consumption of both goods. So, let's take a look at what happens to the amount of trade. Okay, prices are remaining unchanged. We're producing <clears throat> a lot more Y. Okay, that's... This amount, so you've got an increase in the amount of Y that's being produced, a, and the amount of 
trade that occurs is given by this triangle. Okay? That's the amount of exports. This is the amount of imports. And so what you see is that there is a general expansion in the amount of trade. You are producing more of the labor uh, intensive good, a lot more of the labor intensive good, and selling it abroad. Um, and what that means, okay, so you will have an increase in exports of Y and at unchanging um, world prices. Okay, if you increase your exports, you're going to be able to increase your imports as well. So you get an increase in imports of X in return, a general expansion of trade. Okay, so that's probably worth uh, really writing down. So it's a general expansion of trade within this small country. Now, let's remember what the Hexroline framework is all about. The country has a comparative advantage and a reason to export Y because it's labor abundant. What you've seen here is that you now have a labor endowment increase. So you're becoming even more different from the rest of the world. This, this natural thing that you, that you have an advantage in, production of the labor intensive good, well that increases um, uh, even even more now that you've got more of this good, uh, this factor that makes you different. Okay, so you have this uh, increase in national income, an increase in consumption associated with this labor endowment increase. Now, let's imagine that this expansion of trade occurred and you're a large country. So assume that this same thing has happened. You have an increase in the production of the labor-intensive good by the labor-abundant country. They're exporting more and they're importing more. What that is going to tend to do is increase the, the price internationally for X because this country is not, it wants, is importing more of, of X, so the demand for X on the world market goes up, so the price of X rises, and the price internationally for the, for good Y, is going down. So that is going to result in a terms of trade deterioration. Okay, the price of this country's good, if it floods the market because of the labor endowment increase, that actually is going to cause a reduction in the price of X, and a, a, a decrease in the price of Y, and they're going to have some decrease in their social welfare because of the decrease in the cost of their exported good. So for a large country, it's in, uh, the, the labor, the, the endowment growth in the factor that you're abundant in has this downside, that it changes the world relative price of the exported good. So on your own, you should think about how this change in relative prices would affect factor returns inside this country. So, according to the long run Stolper Samuelson result, now I'm not going to go through this here, other than to give you the, uh, uh, the bottom line effect. If the relative price of the labor-intensive good falls as a consequence of the expansion of trade, 
So if the relative price of Y falls, we've learned that the return to labor will fall in real terms and the return to capital will rise. Okay, that's the long run result. So, come back and, and, and sort of tie this all together. For a large country that's labor abundant, that sees a labor endowment increase, that will feed its way through the world market, lowering the price of its exported good Y, and tending to hurt the, endow the, uh, the abundant factor. So the expansion of labor in a large country that's labor abundant will tend to hurt the real incomes of those, uh, of those workers. So if you think about this uh, for just a minute, uh, this is consistent in, uh, with the world in which we have a country like India or, or China not trying to expand the population. I mean, that has complications of its own. But, ten, but trying to accumulate capital. And capital, as we saw in the other video, an endowment increase in the, uh, of capital in the labor abundant country will tend to raise the relative price of that, uh, of, uh, of that, uh, of the exported good and tend to increase the real incomes for labor. So just the opposite of, uh, of this case. So you put these uh, two together and you can get a, a sense of, of, at least in the Hexero lean framework, what one might expect from changes in the growth of the labor and capital stock on trade, on national income, and on factor returns if it's a, if it's a large country uh, that, where this endowment increases.